Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Amir Karam, board certified facial plastic surgeon and founder and creator of KaramMD Skin. I specialize in facial rejuvenation, which basically means I help people look as young as they feel. And today on Skin School, we're gonna talk about a very, very popular and important topic that comes up a lot, and that is whether or not supplements are beneficial from an anti-aging point of view, specifically when it comes to your skin and whether it's worth the money, whether it's worth the time and energy that goes into it, and what you should expect from supplements being used in conjunction to your goals for anti-aging. All right, so let's break it down. So let's break down how the skin ages first, and then we'll talk about where potentially supplementation comes into place. So this is what it comes down to. The skin, frankly looks its best from the day we're born all the way up until our mid-20s. Starting in our mid-20s, there's a change that starts causing the production of collagen to slowly but surely decrease. When that happens, what ends up occurring is the skin becomes thinner and thinner, therefore leading to fine lines and wrinkles, crepiness, and all the changes that we really think about when we think about somebody who has older or more mature looking skin. In the background, there's also discoloration that happens. There's also dehydration and dryness of the skin. There's an increase in pore size. All these things are kind of happening simultaneously, but the core of it, the crux of, of the architecture and structure of the skin comes down to the thickness of the dermis, which the dermis is made up of collagen, and as collagen begins to decrease in its production by those fibroblasts, which are the cells inside the dermis that produce collagen and elastin, what ends up happening is you start to see these changes. Now, these changes will become accelerated right around perimenopause, and menopause in women, and slowly but surely continue to go in that direction in men. But when we see that, you see, just we look at the graph, you see like a sudden drop in the production of collagen and elastin, and that means that there's gonna be an acceleration of skin aging right around that time. Now, we're putting collagen production at the center of anti-aging, right? Because if loss of collagen is causing tons of aging changes, then, it behooves us to want to enhance the production of collagen in general, right? So at the center of all this is where that is. Now, as we've talked about in previous Skin School videos, what we do to stimulate collagen comes down to the topical products that we put on our skin, things like retinols, vitamin C, growth factors, even niacinamide, things that are gonna stimulate the fibroblasts to make collagen. Also, externally, we're gonna use things like microneedling, light chemical peels, you know, even light lasers to create somewhat of an injury to the skin and cause the skin to say, hey, we need to mend this wound effectively, and therefore we're gonna stimulate collagen production to do that, so stimulate collagen production through some type of injury, stimulate collagen production through some type of signal at the cellular level. Those are our two tools to overcome the loss of collagen that happens. And we also mentioned that sun is in a massive accelerator of the loss of collagen. So foundationally, again, I'm just gonna uh, remind everyone that sun protection is huge if you want to do anything to decrease the acceleration of skin aging and also to maintain um, the changes over time. So sun protection is key. Now, we can stimulate collagen production and create an override to the biological decrease over time, but there's more to the story because just by stimulating collagen doesn't mean that you can actually build collagen. So what does it take to actually build collagen? And this is frankly where all of the supplementation story really fits in. So what happens in these situations is, basically what you need to do is on one hand stimulate, but on the other hand, have the components that are necessary for the cell to turn that stimulation into an actual collagen molecule. And supplementation is a very important part of that. And whether it comes through whole foods that we eat, or whether it comes through an additional pill that we take that has certain components included in that, bottom line is you need it to support the stimulation. Let me give you a quick analogy. Take, for example, 
exercise. So you go into the gym and you work out really hard. You, you're pumping you know, weights over and over again. Your muscles are burning. You're tearing apart those muscles. And now it's time to build muscle. And, and well, how can you do that if you don't have protein around in amino acids? How can you do that if you don't have the proper nutritional support to support the growth or even get to a point where you can exercise hard if you don't have the right food? So that's why diet and exercise marry so well together. And in this case, so does supplementation, whether in the form of whole foods or in the form of you know, supplements, needs it to support the changes that you're trying to create through your skincare and through your in-office treatments. Does that make sense? So this is what it really comes down to. So now let's break it down to what do you need? What are the building blocks of collagen production? Now, one of the most, I would say, popular and talked about components is hydrolyzed collagen, right? Collagen peptides. You see those in, in big jars. You take a scoop or two, you put it in your coffee, or you put it in your shake, and you know the idea is that it's gonna somehow help you. Now, I wanna be clear about this. Peptides are chains of amino acids, individual amino acids. The collagen peptide has been shown independently to have some type of impact on fine lines and wrinkles, hydration of the skin, etc. The mechanism is not exactly clear how taking some form of short chain peptide in the way of the, the collagen peptides that we take can actually improve those aspects. But we do know at the very least that the components within the collagen peptides have the amount of of certain types of amino acids like glycine, leucine, isoleucine, all these ones that are gonna improve proline, they're gonna improve the production of collagen, you have them in abundance when you're taking the collagen uh, powders. So whether or not that has some type of direct effect or whether it's just simply because after it's broken down you have a surplus of those particular building blocks, that is what's necessary to actually build. So I give the you know taking collagen supplementation generally speaking i would say it's definitely not going to harm you probably you know has some value i mean we got to take some of these studies with with a little bit of a grain of salt but certainly not uh, not dismiss them completely but also know in the in our minds and our hearts that taking them is giving us the the exact amino acids that are necessary for collagen synthesis, which we know we want to do. Because if you're taking, let's say, if you're on a vegetarian diet or you're not on a really good, uh, well-balanced diet that has all the different amino acids that you would need, well, then you could come short on some of these aspects, or you might have to break down muscle or some other component to establish collagen. Because remember, collagen production and collagen is abundant in our tissues, in our joints, you know, in our nails, in our hair, and all the connective tissues throughout our body. So it's not just to support skin. So if you know your heart needs it, you're gonna get more going that way. If your joints and body needs it, you're probably gonna use more in that direction. So having an abundance of it is very, very helpful and important for the support. So I give collagen peptides a go ahead. I say that's that's a good one. Now what are some other aspects? So here's the other component. Vitamins are an incredibly important part of collagen stimulation as well, because you need to have vitamin C, you need to have certain other cofactors that are going to support the actual production of collagen. And a lot of diets who people aren't taking vitamin C and different things like that, getting it through a supplementation is very useful and very helpful. So vitamins in general, having a well-balanced and enough of, of these particular and important um, collagen components are very, very important to establish the production of collagen as well and get good skin as a result. Other aspects you know, that are a little bit more um, unclear is things like biotin, which obviously is an important component of hair and nail and things like that, but exactly how much of it do you need to stimulate um, collagen production is not exactly clear, but certainly you want it in your diet as well. Again, if you can get it through whole foods, by all means, do it that way. Another very, very important part of the production of collagen is zinc. Now, zinc is one of those uh, aspects that, you know, we know about it, how important it is in terms of our immune function, etc. but it's also an important factor in the production of collagen as well. So as you can see, we're talking about vitamin C, biotin, which is vitamin B, we're talking about zinc, 
all of these aspects, these minerals and vitamins are gonna be crucial to supporting collagen production over time. So make sure that your diet includes them, whether in the form of a, of a you know, supplementation vitamins or whether you're taking them in whole foods like you're taking citrus, you're taking you know, uh, different uh, components that are gonna give you that. That's really, really important. Other really important aspects for skin support are omega-3 fatty acids. These are gonna help you with anti-inflammatory aspects. They're really just a, a key component of good skin health. So making sure that you're getting it in, you know, whether diet through fish or certain nuts, or you're getting it as a component of your, um, you know, pills that you're taking in addition, very important aspect of it. Antioxidants is another category that can support skin health in general. So resveratrol, um, you know, even vitamin C is considered, oral vitamin C is considered an antioxidant, helps with UV damage, helps with free radical um, damage, all very, very important for skin health in general. So fatty acids, antioxidants, all of that is going to help create an anti-inflammatory env environment and help with all around skin. Recently, there's been some links with probiotics, gut health leading to good skin health. So that's something that is just becoming more and more discovered lately. And I would say there's probably some merit there, but I don't know enough about it in the, in the studies that really what's the connection between the gut and the, and the skin, but certainly for overall body health, probiotics are an important part of it as well. And finally, hydration. Oral hydration is an important supplement um, in, in the overall spectrum because as the skin ages, it becomes dehydrated. As you sweat and work out, you lose it. Now, in order to, for, it to you, for you to be able to establish how the hydration status of your body affects your skin, you have to be pretty dehydrated, which you know not most people are not walking around actually dehydrated. But keeping your body fluids at a certain level is just all around good for your health and certainly good for your skin. So making sure hydration is up there as well. Now. I want to put everything in perspective. So we talked about some really important um, components that are technically com considered supplements, but remember that supplementation in and of itself is not a stimulant to collagen production. It's supporting collagen production. So you're going to do these other aspects that we talked about, the daily use of, of active ingredients, uh, in-office treatments, and then you're going to support it with these things. Now, in addition, taking a holistic approach, you want to make sure your sleep is good. You want to make sure that your stress levels are low, alcohol consumption is low, all these other things that are going to just give you an, a baseline holistic approach to great skin. So overall, I'm going to tell you that uh, supplementation, uh, whether in the form of whole foods or in the form of uh, dietary supplements, is definitely a must if you're serious about maintaining and, and creating great skin over time because you need those building blocks. All right, folks, I hope that gave some perspective in terms of how nutrition fits into the story of skin health and skin rejuvenation. That should really help make you decide which directions you want to go with these type of things and then ultimately uh, how to approach the overall skin anti-aging process. All right, I hope you really enjoyed that. If you did, hit like below. If you have any questions or comments, drop them in the comments. And uh, more importantly, make sure you share it with some friends and family to help spread the good word. And if you really enjoy this type of videos, um, make sure you subscribe and to sign up for our CareMD Journal newsletter as well, where we talk about all things related to skin and, and anti-aging. All right, folks, until next time, thanks so much, Dr. Mir Karam.